Could the children please come forward? fingers. Don't get your fingers in between there. Yeah? Okay. Well, how are you guys doing today? You doing good? Yeah, you're having fun with scissors. So you're doing real good. Yeah, you can sit with me here. Go ahead. Sure. All right. So today we're going to talk about making plans. Do you know what making plans means? I don't make plans. You don't make plans? <laughs> okay. Do you ever make plans? Sometimes, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? Big. You want to be big? Okay. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? You don't know yet? Yeah, that's okay. Sometimes some people think they have their whole life planned out, and some people know what they want to be. Like they want to be a veterinarian, someone that works with animals. Connie lets me take my, my shoes off. Connie lets you take your shoes off? Well, she's very sweet, isn't she? Yes. All right. Well, we make all kinds of plans in life, and sometimes we want to be a doctor where we help people feel better. I, I be doctors. I dress up like policemen. You dress up like a policeman, a fireman, and a superhero. And a superhero. Those are all great plans for the future, I tell you what. But God teaches us that sometimes we have to make sure that we're counting on His plans for our lives. Because maybe God has a plan that's specifically for us that doesn't quite match up with what we think we should be doing. Does that make sense? Kind of. Yeah. So we can make all the plans in the world. Grammy had, yes. Grammy had her, the, there was a flower at my Grammy's house. There was a flower at your Grammy's house? Yes. I like flowers too. Some people grow up, they want to be a florist. Well, God also has plans for our lives. Does that make sense? God has plans, and we have to count on Him. You know, in the, one of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible is uh, Proverbs chapter 3. I love the whole proverb, and it says, In all your ways acknowledge Him. Lean on Him, and He will make your paths straight. Does that make sense? So, basically, it's kind of leave room for God. Like, sometimes we have all these plans that we have in our head, but God has plans for us, too. And I guarantee you, God's plans are way better than the plans that we have. Would you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for your great love. And thank you, Father, for the plans you have for us, for a hope and a future. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and it's almost Valentine's Day. Yay! Yay! <laughs> She's winning a race that no one else knew they were in. Every day, everywhere. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, your life-changing and transformative word. We pray that it would continue to do its amazing work of transforming us. Just as your word has told us that it will not return void, we ask now that it would continue to transform us into the image of your Son, doing its amazing work. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right, so uh, we're going to look at um, making plans. And uh, you may have heard the saying, uh, God works in mysterious ways. Really, uh, a lot of people have probably heard it. Uh, it's an old adage. 
and uh, maybe you feel that way, that God works in mysterious ways. But I think it's better to say, instead of saying God works in mysterious ways, to say that God shows up in ways we don't expect. God shows up in ways we don't expect. Because it's really not that it's a, a mystery. It's really that God did something new or something different in a way that we didn't expect Him to do. And, uh, and so really, that's really what you're saying when you say God works in mysterious ways is God showed up in a way I never thought He would. In a different way than I've ever heard of Him showing up before. And God has a tendency to do this. God declares that He doesn't think the way that we think. And He doesn't act the way that we act. In fact, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 tells us that. The Lord says this, He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God. For God has said, I don't think the, the way that you think. And I don't do the things that you do. I have different perspectives and different plans than you do. And I fulfill them differently than you do. And so really, the fact that God works in mysterious ways is really, God, you show up in ways I didn't expect. Ways I wasn't truly praying for because I had a plan in my head. And you didn't go according to my plan. You decided to do it differently. You showed up in a different way. And so... We see this uh, in the story in the life of Paul where God showed up in a different way for him. In fact, Paul was a Jew of Jews. Okay, uh, He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. If there was a ward for being number one most pious, most religious man, he would probably win that award hands down all the time. And so he fasted regularly. He fulfilled the Old Testament law. He took Nazarite vows. He did everything that he thought he could do. And he studied under some of the most prestigious people in the ancient world. And yet, God showed up in a different way that he didn't expect. And we see his story in Acts. And then we also see him talking to the uh, Galatians and the Galatian church about this. He says, you know that... What I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how I violently persecuted the Christians. I did my best to get rid of them. I was one of the most religious Jews of my own age. And I tried as hard as possible to follow all the old traditions of my religion. But then something happened. For it pleased God in His kindness to choose me and call me even before I was born. What undeserved mercy... Then he revealed his son to me that I could proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. Amen. I tell you what, this is really interesting. He's saying, look, I was a Jew among Jews. And because I was a Jew among Jews, I saw these Christians as something uh, uh, that, that, that is inappropriate that I needed to stop because they were going against what I understood God to be. And so I persecuted him. He even helped. Uh, uh, as they killed the Apostle Stephen, the young man Stephen, a follower and disciple of Jesus, and he's, as he held their coats. And uh, Jews at this time would have seen Gentiles as dogs. In fact, you see that several times referenced in the uh, Bible where they refer to them as filthy dogs and, and so on. And so, and yet God chose a Jew among Jews to be the person, the envoy to the Gentiles. I mean, I can't imagine him as a young man growing up under Gamaliel, one of the great ancient philosophers of that time, and Jewish teachers of that time, thinking, I'm going to be a light to the Gentiles. God shows up in unexpected ways. God shows up. God is a God of surprises. Wouldn't you expect God to choose a powerful man with a reputation of inspirational leadership to become king? 
Not some small shepherd boy that nobody's ever heard of. Wouldn't you expect God to announce His coming with pomp and splendor and the biggest party you've ever seen? And not through the wilds of a wild locust-eating man crying in the wilderness. Wouldn't you expect the King of Kings to be born in a palace of marble floors and gold trim? Not in a stable or a barn. If there's anything we've learned from the Bible, it's to expect the unexpected, to make room for God, for God's ways are not our ways, and the plans that we have are not necessarily the plans that God has. God who often shows up in unexpected times, in unexpected places, and through unexpected people. God chooses to do these things. As people who love God, we have to learn to make room for God. In other words, a quote from Oswald Chambers, he once wrote, he said, We need to learn to give God elbow room. The key is to keep your life so constant in its contact with God that His surprising power may break out at any moment from anywhere. Always be in a state of expectancy and see that you leave room for God to come as He likes. Amen. Father, Your will be done, not my will. To leave room for God to come as He desires. For God to come as He desires according to His will. You know, I know we feel sometimes if God, if You'll just do it this way. God, if you will just fulfill it this way. I've got it all mapped out. I've got it all planned out. If you'll just come along with the program, Lord, it'll all work out perfectly. And God says, no, I'm going to do it a different way. And I've got something else I want to accomplish through that. You know what it is? It's hard to wait upon God. It's hard to wait above, upon God. Above all, nurturing this, this sense of spiritual expectancy of God to pop out of anywhere. One of the lessons God's trying to teach us is to wait upon Him and to move as He moves according to His will. And it's hard, hard to wait upon God. God, we need this now. God, don't you know the time constraints? God, but yet God always shows up in His perfect timing, according to His purposes, according to His will. His will be done, not ours. Learning to let God be God. And when we wait upon the Lord, the Lord has said this, He says, Isaiah 40, chapter 29 through 30, He says, He gives power to the faint and increases the strength of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings with like eagles. And they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Amen. As we know from Jesus' own words, the Spirit blows where it wills. In other words, sometimes all we need to do is allow ourselves to be moving with the Spirit as the Spirit moves in the direction that the Spirit is moving. Instead of fighting it and resisting it. For God has plans. And He will honor His plans and His will. We have to be on the lookout for God. To ask God to teach us to give Him elbow room as He desires. Too often in the knot, we like to put God in a box. We like a God that we can call on that will do uh, the things that we want Him to do, kind of almost like a genie. You rub the lamp when you pray. As long as God will do it this way. But God, time and time again throughout all the Scripture, has shown He's going to do it the way He desires it, to fulfill His will and His plan. We have to learn to give God elbow room and not hem Him in, not put Him in a box. 
How do you hem God in? Do you really ex expect God to surprise you today? Do you really expect God to surprise you in a way you've never imagined? What would it look like in your life if you were to give God more room to come as He desires? To, to solve the problems of your life in a way that He desires to. We often don't expect what God's plans are. He sees the world differently. We're so finite. We can only see tunnel vision of our situations. But God sees it all. He sees the big picture. And He wants to solve it in different ways. In fact, time and time again in the Scripture, God shows up in different ways. In a burning bush to an 80-year-old man in the wilderness who was on the run because he killed somebody. And he says, you're the guy. I'm the guy. This guy stutters and he's 80. You're going to go back. You're going to talk to the most powerful nation at the time. And you're going to free my people. What? A guy who stutters who's 80 years old? That's who you chose, God? Yeah. He shows up in unexpected ways. And does things that we wouldn't do. We wouldn't even think to do. Abraham, why is he almost 100 years old having a child? What about the Jews? The Jews really stumbled across this. When God decides to act, to do things that are new and different, the Jews really stumbled over this. They, they said, no, we expect a general to come on a horse, on a white horse with a sword in hand. He's going to slaughter the Romans and where everything's going to be fine. God said, no, I don't want to do that. I, I want to save the Romans. And then I want to use the Romans to spread this gospel throughout the world. And then when I'm done with the Romans, I'm going to use something else or someone else. God shows up in different ways. And we have to learn to let God be God. Because we're not God. We have to let God be God and let God. His will be done. We have to be seeking after His will. Not, God, I got these perfect plans. God, if you just would do these things, it would all work out perfectly. That's not letting God be God. That's putting God in the box and making Him a genie. You know, uh, I was in an accident. And of course, I, I lost half my foot. And, uh, and uh, I was... Uh, I had just had my second surgery and I got my pins out of my foot and I was in a boot and uh, I couldn't really put a lot of pressure on it. But I saw this poor woman, she, she, her car literally ran out of gas in this freeway median type thing and uh, there was a gas station right over here up this little hill and it wasn't too far and I normally stop and try to help folks uh, but I just didn't know what I was going to do and because uh, I have one good leg and so uh, I'm thinking, man, how am I going to push this car up that hill? So the woman's freaking out and crying and because these cars are almost hitting her and things like that. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, how do I help this woman? So I started to pray. I said, God, grant me the strength to push this car up this hill. Grant me the strength of six men. And I closed my eyes and I began to push in faith. And all of a sudden the car started to move. And I opened my eyes and there were six men standing there and they pushed the car up the, the hill. But the funny thing is, is what I was thinking. What I was actually thinking was that God was going to supernaturally give me the strength of six men so I could one-legedly push this car up this hill. And, uh, but God said, you want the strength of six men? There are six men standing here. I'm going to send them over here to push that car up this hill. And so God, in my head, showed up in a different way because the way I was praying, I was thinking something completely different. And God was thinking more literally. Um, well, I got six men here. Let me just... Tell them to go over here and help this person. You know, I read a story of a woman uh, who uh, was on a fixed income and uh, she was struggling to buy groceries because she had to choose between prescriptions and groceries and gas and so on. I know a lot of you guys are facing those types of situations now. I think we all are with the inflation and everything. Well, her neighbor was an atheist and he didn't believe in God. He would li often listen to her prayers as she prayed in her backyard. Um, and pray to God asking him for groceries. 
And so one day, she, he decided that he was going to prove that God didn't exist to her. So he heard her praying for groceries, and he went out to the grocery store, and he bought all of her groceries, a ton of groceries, and he put them all on the front stoop. And as she came home from church, she saw all these groceries there, and she was so excited, beaming from ear to ear. God has answered my prayers. She started praising God, and the neighbor, of course, jumps out and says, God didn't do that. I did. And she says, absolutely God did that. And he used a devil like you to do it. <laughs> God will use anybody and anything. And if we'll allow him and just say, hands off, God, we want to make room for you to come as you want to come. We want you to be God in our lives, not us. We relinquish that when we decided to follow Christ. You know, and often, too often, we think too small. God thinks of the big picture. God sees the big picture. And we're thinking small. We're thinking, fix this problem over here. Maybe grease this cog. And God's saying, no, I want to build a new engine that runs great. Not just okay or just getting by. God thinks differently than we do. And often we think too small. And so let God be God in your life. Stop trying to put God in a box. And He's able to do infinitely more than we could ever imagine. Infinitely more than we could ever imagine. In fact, uh, believe it or not, I never wanted to be a minister. In fact, uh, I had other plans. And uh, I, could, I couldn't believe when God called me. I was, and all these people, I was like Jonah. And God was... Uh, uh, Sending all these people in my life, people I've never really spent time with. And they were saying, God's saying, you're going to become a minister. You're going to become, and I'm like, you guys are nuts. What are you talking about? Me? Of all people? Absolutely not. And yet here I am, and I couldn't imagine anything else. All the plans that I had, I don't even remember all, uh, all the plans that I had. And yet God has called me to be a minister. And, and so I think... We can make all the plans in the world and God is faithful and God will honor us and he will honor our acts of faith. But ultimately, his plans are better. His plans are better for us. And you'll love it a lot more than your plans. I promise you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, I thank you so much. For the plans that you have for each of us, the plans to prosper us, the plans for a hope and a future, plans not to punish us, plans not to destroy us, plans not to harm us in any way, but plans of a loving Father to take care of His people, His children, and love and grace and mercy. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Our final.